Yeah, not that, no, I will not ask people to move. Um, because I know when I'm sitting at the back of the room and people tell me to move up front, I never do it. And I never do it because after you get everybody in the back of the room to move up to the front of the room, then people go and sit in the back of the room and the people that were in the back of the room were already happy. But I did want to ask any of those who were going to be on the round table speaking for their schools to come join us up here, even if we need to get some more seats, just so we're not as spread. And it doesn't look like there's going to be all that many of us anyway. And it looks like we already started, even though I didn't really started yet, but that's okay. Okay. Can we, we have the website at the Can we have the website at the screen please? Thank you. Okay. So, when we have the agenda up, fantastic. Um this uh, session is a roundtable on the Dynamic Coalition on Schools and Internet Governance. Um, hopefully, uh, some of you who were going to speak on the various schools are here. Otherwise, we really might have a very short session. But in any case, um, the agenda we've got is, first, there was going to be a roundtable of, of, of self-introductions, so we'll, uh, I guess we'll just go through it and get people to, to introduce. Then basically, oh, I see this is the old agenda, but anyhow, uh, then uh, basically a little bit about what the dynamic coalition is all about, what we're trying to do, where we're trying to go with it. Then uh, look at the work that's been done this year, basically a quick review of what we've done and, and the, the document that's, that's being worked on and then uh, talk about, and then look a little bit at the screen, at, at the website that's been built, and, and how we go on it, and then uh, basically talk about what we'd like to do next year, and sort of what our next steps are, what kind of things we'd like to do. So uh, I, I, as I said, I'm Avri Doria. I'm not the, the, the lead of this group. I'm, uh, that, that's, that's uh, Sandra Hoffenrichter. And, uh, but she unfortunately, or fortunately rather, is in a me main session at this point. Uh, and, and thus it, it fell to me to be the one uh, doing this one. And she has asked that we start with a sort of, she, she likes to call it a tour de table, or a going around and introducing ourselves. And what I'm especially interested though, is having those of you that are either managers of schools, teachers of schools, someone who's designing a new school, um, someone, et cetera. Basically, tell us a little bit about your involvement with the whole notion of schools and internet governance. Definitely interested in, in your name and perhaps where you work other than that, but what really is important is what's your involvement with schools and internet governance? So, start with, with, with you, Rainer, and then go, yeah. Hello, my name is Rainer Rodewald. I'm with the Summer School on Internet Governance uh, that is held in Germany. Um, it's now exists for, I think, 14 or 15 years. Um, I'm with the school for three years and I'm uh, more or less the digital facilitator for the school. Hi, um, I'm Koliwe uh, Majama. I am with the African School on Internet Governance. So my attachment first, uh, I'm alumni of uh, the 2016 school. So the African School has had seven editions. I attended the 2016 one, but I've organized the school from um, 2017 to date. And I'm also your online moderator, just to say we have um, Glenn McKnight from the North American School on Internet Governance online. And uh, who else do we have? Yeah. 
yeah, we just have Glenn on. And Maureen uh, from the SIG in the Pacific as well. So two people. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, and I should mention that I have taught at both the German school, uh, which is the, the Euro SIG school in, in Germany, and at the African school, which moves around Africa depending upon where the uh, African Union or where the IGF, no, is it the? Yeah, it's, so it's co-convened with the African Internet Governance Forum. Right, okay, which is convened by the African Union. Yeah. Okay, so I had, I had it close. Okay, uh, if, 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 if willing, I'd like to sort of go through the people that, that are sitting in the room, as I say, Imagine yourself at a virtual round table, um, since this is a virtual round table, so please. Oh yeah, that's right, you guys don't have microphones. No, why Hello, yeah, it's working. So I'm Gustavo, Gustavo Paiva, I'm from Brazil. I am an alumni from the South School and from Brazilian's Governance School. For two years now, I've, I'm a, I've been a, a freelance in, in the school as an evaluator, not as a teacher. And uh, so I'm not part of the permanent staff. And I am looking into um, establishing some kind of seminar in my local context, in my local community, to go around the, the technical institutes to engage students from a technical background. Thank you. Would you like to say a few words? Well, I'm here for pure, purely for curiosity. I'm from Finland, uh, representing Electronic Frontier Finland. So, great. You guys should do a school. <laughs> Hi, good morning. This is Mohammad Abdul Haq Onu, Secretary General Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum. I am also coordinator National SIG in Bangladesh. Bangladesh School of Internet Governance, uh, organized uh, by e Bangladesh Internet Governance Forum. Thank you. Thank you very much. And continuing our virtual roundtable. Hello, good morning. My name is Cristina Morales. I am from Nicaragua. I'm here because uh, we are organizing the first UDAGF in the country. So I wanted to know and learn the, about your experience doing or organizing this kind of event, uh, teaching, and that kind of thing. That's why I'm here. Fantastic. And that's sort of the whole kind of resource we're hoping to build. So please. Hello, my name is Katarina Höhne. I'm from Diplo Foundation, but I'm here to report. So if you have any notes that should go into the report, let me know. <laughs> Thank you very much. And to you next. Thank you. Um, morning. Uh, my name is Vinicius. I'm, uh, I'm part of the advisory team to the Brazilian Internet Steering Committee and also part of the organization of the Brazilian School on Internet Governance. Uh, the Brazilian School on Internet Governance has been, ho hold, uh, has been held uh, since 2014, so six editions until, until now. And uh, it's, well, we have uh, an annual meeting, uh, an annual inter intensive course, but also we had some ad hoc meetings, uh, uh, ad hoc activities actually, um, on demand. Uh, and also we have some sort of um, focus school um, focused on uh, law professionals. Um, so it's a sort of a diverse project, but uh, we, we actually had this, have this uh, specific traditional um, annual course. Thank you. Thank you. So that brings us up to what, four schools so far or, or five? There was a possible school and a possible school. So it's like, four, I think there's four schools already. Already we are passing three schools. We had one, two, three, four. And um, online, the North American. And, and online, the yeah. North American. So yeah. we're at five schools in the yeah. room, and I wanted to check. I, I wanted to keep count of that, because sort of what I hoped to have was all the schools at least around the table. So five schools already, which is already a good, you know, it's already a handful. Um, thank you. I'm Anred Esterhuisen. I'm the, uh, together with Koliwe, uh, organized the African School on Internet Governance. I'm also an advisor to the South African National School of Internet Governance. 
and I participate with great pleasure and honor um, in the European School of, of Internet Governance um, from time to time. I'm also interested in being here because I'm actually writing a report for the IGF Secretariat on the IGF's role in capacity development. So I'm hoping to learn from today, not just about the schools, but also about how you feel the IGF can be more effective as a partner or platform for capacity development. Thank you. So now that's six schools. Hello, I'm Alejandra Prieto from the Internet Society. And I actually have two hats here because I was a participant in the European Summer uh, Intergovernance School with uh, all these amazing speakers that we can have here. <laughs> and I am now a co-organizer of the first winter school on Internet Governance in Bucharest. It will be uh, in December, so in two weeks. So I have my feedback as a participant, so that can help to now do a better uh, school uh, in the future. So thank you. Thank you, and seven schools. Right. I'll see if I can add some. Adam Peake from ICANN. Um, as an organization, we're involved with a number of schools, either as supporters and sponsors, or lecturers, or organizers, and so on. Uh, particularly, um, I've been involved with a school that is not quite a school, it's called APIGA, uh, Asia Pacific Internet Governance Academy, and that's a, um, uh, it takes place every year in Korea, and it's a partnership we have with KISA, which is a, a government agency. Um, so half of the students come, usually master's level students come from Korea, and then we have an open fellowship to come f from across the Asia Pacific. It's about 60 people and a slightly different structure from many other schools. Um, we support, as I said, various schools around the world. I've been involved in the Asia Pacific School of Internet Governance. Um, we support all kinds of different activities. Uh, we're involved in Eurosig, and we're beginning a new type of program as part of our outreach effort, which is working with universities, where the university professor will put on a school, will, will be open for their university students and others from their region, and we try and allow them to get master's credits. Um, so they'll attend the school and then take credits back to their university, and typically a master's level course. So this is a sort of internal university internet governance school curriculum. Fantastic. So that's at least nine and then maybe a bit of a ten-ish, but ten's a nice number, so I'll call it ten for now. Just for people that came in, um, like basically I'm 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 affecting a round table. This was meant as a round table, but 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 since it quite isn't, uh, I'm the the rounding factor. So I'm walking around with a microphone on a tour de table. Uh, so no, I'll go there and then I'll come back to you. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Joseph Chiho. I am from Namibia. I'm from Isaac, Namibia, and I'm a curious user and just want to find out more about the uh, School of Indian Governance. Thank you very much. So I know we're going to get another school here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. My name is Mary Duma. I'm from Nigeria, and um, I drive the West African School of Internet Governance, which we started in 2018 in Burkina Faso, and uh, we have done the second one in um, in uh, Nami uh, in the Gambia for 2019, and we started Nigerian School of Internet Governance this year in uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, why I'm here is that I want to learn from others and uh, also need to see how others have survived because we have a survival issue. Uh, sustainability of the school. And uh, since I'm talking to a board member of ICANN, we are hoping that ICANN would actually um, uh, give greater support to us to be able to continue. The we believe that when we do this school, oh. yes, we, we believe that when we train these young people, build the capacity, they'll be able to continue with the, 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 the discussion and uh, the IGF uh, beyond us that will be retiring. So uh, this is why I'm here. And I, I also want to say that uh, I'm happy that um, uh, other schools are here so that we can exchange uh, ideas. So I want to be a member of the DC. Thank, Thank you. you. So that brought us to, you added two schools, correct? Yeah. So that brought us to 12. Uh, Thank you. Hi, I'm Dustin Loop. I am chairing the North American School on Internet Governance for 
2020. Um, it'll be the third year, and it kind of moves around on a rotating basis where not only it rotates locations, but kind of rotates chairs and uh, leadership structures. I've participated in schools and spoken at them, but never organized one. So I guess that's what I'm hoping to get out of today. I don't get to add another school for you because we already added it with Glenn earlier, but so we're still at 12. What I'm doing is a tour de table on a virtual round table. So since you came in and I'm already past you, I'll come to you and basically introduce yourself and any involvement you might have with a school in internet governance. And I'm counting the new schools that we've mentioned and we're up to 12. Uh, <clears throat> Hello, my name is Muriel Apini. I'm from Benin and I'm in charge of Internet School of Governance in Benin. So um, it's my first time here and I want to, uh, no, I'm from Benin, not Berlin. Benin. 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 In West Africa. Yeah. So, <laughs> B uh, E N. No, yeah, yeah. I N. This is. The, um, so I'm here to learn and see how I can gain a new experience and even more um, share mine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And yes, you guys are next. Yeah. Good morning to everybody. My name is Ilona Stadnik. I'm from Russia. I'm. Um, collaborating with our CCTLD authority, .ru. And actually, we still have, have no internet governance school, but we are planning to make it this summer, so we are in the same boat with you guys. So keep updated, we will post it always in the mailing lists. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody, I'm Alessia Sposini, I'm from Italy, and uh, I don't have any internet governance school, so okay, I'm sorry. Welcome, no, no, <laughs> no, no need to be sorry. We, we, we can't all, oh, I'm, I'm coming through. Okay, so we're at 13 now, right? Because I didn't, I didn't raise the number when, when Benin said uh, <laughs> it's school, and, 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 and I look forward to the 14 there, but it's still 13, yes. Hi, my name is Daniel O'Malley. I'm from the Center for International Media Assistance based in Washington, DC. And I'm here mainly because we're, as an organization, really interested in making sure that journalists and news media professionals are more involved and engaged in internet governance. And I think that internet governance schools are a component to making sure that the I IGF uh, lives up to its multi-stakeholder uh, aspirations. And also for numbers, I once uh, participated in an IGF Academy training. So. You know, I think that, uh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter whether I'm 13 or 14, but I know, and I know a lot of the schools, I've seen occasional when, you know, journalists do come and join the fellows at a school, and I think that's a really good thing to, to have the journalists participate in the learning as opposed, in addition to the reporting. Please. Still at 13. <laughs> Thank you. Um, my name is uh, Vili Tongabo. I'm from the Fiji island, a uh, small island in the South Pacific. And it's my first time to be here as a participant in this uh, IGF forum. And um, I come from the Ministry of Education back at home in Fiji. And um, uh, we've been implementing a lot of uh, technology enabled learning and on top of the internet connectivity around schools. And um, I'm here to uh, to learn as much as I can and gather information, knowledge, and best practices, which I can go back and um, implement as uh, government, uh, internet governance back in Fiji. In Fiji. Thanks. Fantastic, and thank you. And definitely should be able to start a school with the ministry you've got. Uh, so thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I do not have a sick. Yay for me, <laughs> but I have I have participated in the African School of Internet Governance and uh, have worked with other people who are trying to set up some SIGs in their countries. So just looking forward to learning um, about the space more. Thank you. Please. Yes. Hi, uh, I am Liliana, coming from North Macedonia. I'm also a co-founder of the IGF initi initiative in the country, and I'm running the civil society organization. I'm dealing of, um, with training of uh, teachers, parents, and, and children within um, high school how to deal with uh, internet governance issues. I don't know if um, I don't have any information of um, uh, school of internet governance. Is there a possibility to establish one, or um, 
How, how does it function, actually? actually it, it's interesting because we'll get to it, because part of the document we've been working on, and we'll talk about it a little bit more later, a taxonomy, and we've been talking about schools, but one of the varieties we've talked about, and you're the second one that hits, is sort of a program within another school. So people that are doing, you know, working with universities or high schools or whatever could indeed establish something that perhaps it's not quite a school, but it's a program, and yeah, the information we have should hopefully work for that. And sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Tico. I am now with the German government's Federal Office of Information Security, but here in my private capacity. Uh, I've had the privilege to attend the European Summer School of, uh, on Internet Governance back in 2014 in Meissen, and I enjoyed it very much at the time already, but uh, this is my first IGF, and it took me until this week to really fully appreciate the breadth and the depth of the amazing schedule that uh, Sandra and you guys uh, put together. Uh, and I was curious to catch up with recent developments, uh, so that's what drew me to this session. Fantastic. Thank you. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, Nadira, I'm also alumni for, of uh, Eurosig, uh, but also I am on the executive uh, council, uh, uh, committee, executive committee on the Asia Pacific School of Internet Governance, and I'm here to see how we can cooperate the schools together. Thank you. The Asia Pacific was already mentioned by you, Adam, right? So I don't get to add another one? Okay. I'm just greedy about my numbers. Uh, please, would you like to? Uh, Ubaid from Kabul Press Club. Uh, uh, I'm uh, working in capacity of as a journalist. Uh, we are not from any school, uh, but I'm here to observe the internet governance to educate my fellow journalists uh, back in Afghanistan. And uh, maybe we start uh, some remote program uh, by help of internet governance from other countries uh, to initiate something in Afghanistan is the first thing. Thank you. Basically, what I'm doing is this was supposed to be a roundtable discussion, so I am at least for the purpose of this round, the virtualization of a round table, walking to each one and asking if you've got an, to introduce yourself and if you're involved with a school and in internet governance to mention it. If not, just, you know, I'll move on, but. Well, thank you. Uh, my name is Hans Bergmann. I'm a teacher here in Germany. And uh, when reading that this is a topic concerning school and Internet, I'm just interested what I can learn here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. And to you, sir. Hi, my name is Rabindra Jagannath. I am from Trinidad and Tobago. I am part of the Trinidad and Tobago Multi Stakeholder Advisory Group, and we are the organizers for the Internet Governance Forum in Trinidad. And as a firm, this year we actually started incorporating um, schools into our Internet Governance Forum. and what we have been doing this year in preparation for our forum for 2020, we've actually visited some of the secondary schools to actually inform them about internet governance and the internet governance forum to get more active participation from them. And hopefully in the future, we expect that it will evolve into a separate youth IT um, internet governance forum. Fantastic, thank you. So I think that brings me to 14, right? Or did I lose count somewhere along the line? Uh, would you like? Oh, sorry. Yes. Here's the mic. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ipan. I'm from Armenia. Uh, uh, my organization, our organization, has a center where uh, people with blindness, also children with blindness, uh, study how to use internet and how to use computer with screen readers. Those are special programs uh, through which blind people use the internet and uh, a computer. Thank you. Thank you very much. And last person on my virtual round table. Uh, hi, so my name is Gale. I work for the Free Software Foundation Europe. Uh, and uh, one of the things I'm working on is um, trying to convince European schools to deploy free and open source. Um, to increase liter technical literacy among the young people. 
Thank you very much. OK, I would like to ask that the rest of the virtualization of a roundtable be done by you all by going to microphones. But I really didn't want to ask everybody to line up at a microphone. Uh, such Did I miss you? I thought I did. I uh, so this is part of my virtual round table. Okay. And if you're involved with the school, please say. Yes, I'm Diana van der Stelt from the Maxim Janza IT Found, uh, Solutions Foundation in Accra, Ghana. And we deploy uh, integrated learning transformation programs in schools all over the country where we introduce ICT labs, internet, and so on. So I'm uh, very uh, interested in the discussion here today, like how to go about. A lot of the schools in Africa are still not online, but that's the next step. So that's where we're going to service. Okay, thank you. So in addition to the 14 schools we've got, we've basically got at least three or four different schools that could add um, internet governance programs or courses or something along the way. So it's a good sort. And I'll put this back and go sit up there. Okay. So it was a rather long. Uh, oops. It was a rather long. So we talked a little bit about what the what the DC schools on internet governance. Of course, the Dynamic Coalition. I don't know if most are familiar with it. This is sort of supposed to be a coalition of people that are actively working on something. It's supposed to be dynamic. You know, we've got to keep doing stuff. We can't just call ourselves a, a dynamic coalition and not do anything. And it's supposed to be a multi-stakeholder coalition where we have people from various stakeholder uh, walks of life, whether it's you know part of the strict definition of the Tunis agenda, uh, stakeholder groups are just people that happen to be journalists, happen to be teachers, happen to be farmers, happen to be what have you. So um, basically, that's what we are. What we're trying to do is not in any sense determine what is or is not a school. And in fact, in our first effort is, is to build a taxonomy. What we're trying to collect is sort of what are the varieties of things that people are doing and they're calling schools or the variety of things that people are doing to, to create an educational opportunity? So that's one part of it. The other part was to, of this taxonomy, which, by the way, you'll notice that when we get to what we call it 0 0.7, we do not call it one yet because while we've worked on it for a year, there's still more to go before we could call it complete. But we're trying to find a common language so that when we're talking about our programs, we're talking about the curriculums, or curricula, excuse me, uh, we're talking about how we organize schools, we can start to have a common knowledge base, a common vocabulary. I noticed teaching at a couple, and I teach it to now, and I've taught at a couple others over the years, that when I got to talking about it, and talking about it with other people that were involved in schools, I'd sort of be hand-waving, and we'd be using different words for things that sounded sort of similar. So while this is not in any way establishing this is the way one must talk about it, what we're trying to sort of do is, is collect together a, a set of concepts, a set of words, a set of descriptions. So, that, and that has been largely, and let me look at the agenda so I remember where I am and I just don't hand wave my way through this thing. Right, so, so you know, that's what we are. I believe that this is the end of our second year. We spent our first year sort of trying to figure out what is it we want to do, trying to get people to sign on. We, we've got a fair number of schools that are sponsors. Might be good to go to the, um, to the page that shows our sponsors and stuff. Do you have that there, the members? That's on the wiki, okay. And, and, and basically what we're using for our materials here is uh, the, the website, which has been part of the work of what's been done this year. That's where most of the information is, is collected. So, no, that, okay, no, that's the, the names of the schools. Did we have the list somewhere of all the people that have signed on to the coalition? Or is that at the, um, 
on the uh, IGF site. Okay, if you can find that just to see. So, and others, other people can sign on to our coalition. We've, we collected the names at the beginning. Okay, there's the list of founding members. So these are the people that, that came together at the beginning because to found a dynamic coalition, you need to have partners, you need to have people that signed on from the formalized notion of stakeholder groups that the IGF works with the Tunis agenda plus however many they care about. Um, so, so basically that's what started us. So, so that's what the, the DC uh, Dynamic Coalition on Schools and Internet Governance is. I don't know if anybody has any questions or comments on that before I go on to the, the next part of the agenda. I don't see anybody going to the, yes, yes, please. Okay, my name again is Mary Duma from Nigeria. Um, it looks to me that um, the DC uh, is spread across the stakeholder groups of the IGF. So in doing the school, does it mean that the school also would have to put that into consideration when you are going to the, no, no, no. I don't think so. Um, you know, other people may have other opinions, but, but my opinion is a school should certainly try to reach out, but if a school wanted to form itself or a program for children or uh, a, a university program that was just going for students, the, all programs do not have to be multi-stakeholder. The dynamic coalition has to be multi-stakeholder. And certainly there's an advantage in having a school that, that touches many of the stakeholder groups. But, but you'll also find out, as, as I personally talk, that sticking strictly to the, the four preordained stakeholder groups from antiquity uh, is not necessarily the best way to bring together all the stakeholders of, of the internet that we have. So I think while in terms of being a DC in IGF, we need to have the, the three plus one or two. I think in terms of being real out in the world, we can have stakeholders of many different kinds. So that would be my, my take on, on that one. Okay, in which case, let me, let me go through the work that's been done uh, through the year. So basically, and largely done by, by, by Rainer here, is, is a website, and, and perhaps we can do a, a quick walkthrough of, of that. Um, so basically, you're, you're in the wiki at the moment, right? Oh no, you're in the website. So basically, one of the things we've got on it is, um, you know, we keep on meetings, but the, go, the school's on AIG. One of the things that, that we want to do, and that's quite ready, and I want to welcome the, uh, the, the participant of our 15th school. I went around and did a virtual tour de table. Maybe you want to get up and say a little bit about your school, since I've, yeah, because I was counting up schools, and the Southern school hadn't been mentioned, so I get to count it as 15 once you talk. Just came in the right time, huh? Any time you came in would have been the right time. You're my friend. Thank you so much for that. You're welcome. My name is Olga Cavalli. I come from Argentina. And we started with the South School of Internet Governance in 2009. We have organized it. Next year will be the 12th. And we, it's, it's a little, little bit different than other schools. It's more outreach, as we believe that our region needs perhaps more outreach towards uh, the understanding of all these issues. Um, we started with a group of 30 students. You were there in Buenos Aires at the first, at the first uh, edition. And, and now we have approximately 180 or 200 students. The last one this year was organizing the Secretary of Economy of Mexico. Then it's where we'll be in Buenos Aires again after 12 years in the University of Buenos Aires. All the students receive a fellowship. Depending on the budget, we also pay hotel and meals for all the students, or for half of the students, or for dependent, that depends on, on the cost of the city. But at least 
40% of half of the students do receive um, a fellowship that includes um, hotel and meals. And of course, nobody pays for the training. Um, we have simultaneous translation, English, Spanish all the time. And to the two times that was organized in Brazil, in Sao Paulo in 2011, 10, sorry, and in 2017 in Rio de Janeiro, we had translation in three languages, Spanish, English, and Portuguese. And we have also remote participation all the time with uh, video and the uh, audio streaming in the languages of two or three, dependent on where is it organized. That's it. And uh, we have a book. Uh, we have produced a book. For yeah, the and I think and you're the first ones to actually produce a school book. I might be wrong, but I think you're the first uh, ones maybe, to pull that off. Maybe. It's a... Uh, it's a book that we published with, jointly with Fundación Getulio Vargas from Brazil, and it's translated into English, Spanish, and Portuguese. Fantastic. Yeah, I think I made it to like three or four of yours yes. before. Yeah, yeah, you went to Panama, Buenos Aires, and you went to Colombia, <laughs> and you went to, I don't remember. See, you remember. Oh, something else is we rotate among countries. Uh, we do it every year in a different country, and sometimes we repeat countries because it's yeah. difficult to find a local partner no, and, and the city and the place. But um, the beauty of rotating, it's a lot of work, but brings people from the country in, in each um, in each edition. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll stay here if you have more questions. Oh, Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, and, and, and please contribute. In fact, Part of the thing, as hopefully people have either read the taxonomy or they look at it, they'll see that one of the kinds of school is indeed one that, that rotates. And you would have to repeat at some point because there aren't an, if, an infinite number of countries. Um, so unless, but yes. Okay, I had, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. My name is Satish and I'm from India. I, I'm part of two SIGs. One is the APSIG, the Asia Pacific School in Internet Governance, and the second is the INSIG. I have several of my colleagues here. I just wanted to mention, I gather that INSIG has already been mentioned, so I'll just add, to, add one point to that. Uh, the most obvious outcome of a school is that people get trained, capacity gets built, et cetera. But we also have uh, another agenda for us, which is to build a community that can support the IGF itself. In India, we don't have a national IGF. So the School and Internet Governance, after two years, we actually set up the first youth IGF. And that is the first step, the baby step towards uh, the IGF itself. So we have now completed four editions of the school and two editions of the youth IGF. Some of the organizers are here of the youth IGF. We aim to do the actual IGF by these steps. So one of the, uh, by design actually, it's not accidental, uh, we set up the school in part to achieve the uh, aim of having an IGF itself. Thank you. Thank you. And so I think you've brought us to 17 schools. Maybe I'm just, I really like the way this number is growing. Uh, please. Is it working? Please make sure you give your name, but yes, okay, please. So um, my name is Vakas Hassan, uh, and I come from Pakistan. Uh, I'm a member of the sharing committee which runs the Pakistan School on Internet Governance. Uh, we sort of claim to be the pioneer school in Asia Pacific, the national school, because we started out in 2015. Uh, in the capital city of Islamabad. Uh, and we followed some kind of a same model that Ms. Olga just mentioned. Uh, we don't hop countries, but we do hop cities. So in 2016, we did it in Lahore. 2017 was Peshawar, then 18 Quetta, uh, Karachi, and 2019 Quetta, which are the provincial capitals, actually. So every year we go to a different city uh, to bring the school forward and for internet awareness, of course. Uh, next year, we're going to Gilgit, which is the mountainous area um, um, for the Karakaram area. So which, which might, it might be a bigger challenge for us, but we're up for it. Just one thing that I wanted to mention um, out of our experience in the school is that when we started, started out, we were actually heavily dependent on, on um, funding from the international donors and foreign speakers as well. But uh, now we are proud to say that when we held PKSIG in 2019, uh, we didn't have any foreign speaker. All of the speakers were local speakers, local experts that were able to come. Um, and most of the funding, almost 80% of the funding, was through the local uh, operators and the local community and the local business people that are out there. One, the best thing that I think about the, our school is that the secretariat of the school is actually being managed by the government, which is the 
telecom regulator of pakistan and civil society which is the internet society chapter so it's kind of a um, a sign a notion that the government and the civil society together are uh, holding something about the school thank you fantastic thank you before going to the next speaker i i just wanted to go back to the map that i've got there we've now hit 18 schools we've got three dots so hopefully part of what we're trying to do is because there are a lot of schools, there are a lot of efforts. I'm not sure we have them all defined correctly in our taxonomy. That's why it's only 0 0.7 and not 1. Um, but I really encourage you, and, and some of you say, yes, but our school moves around and, and we don't have a specific place to put the pin. And one of the things we've said is we give you the choice. In other words, if you have like a home office, you can put the pin there. If you want to move the pin each year, Rainer has said, hey, yeah. just send them email and say, instead of here, we're there, then we'll move it. You know, there's, there's no problem with that. But we'd really like to see, because there's a richness. And one of the things that hasn't really been captured yet, we're starting to try is the richness and diversity of the types of schools that people are coming up with, the types of curricula they're coming up with, the setups, the how they're funded. There's, there's each one of you, you know, I, I don't might mean to contradict you when you said yours is different. My first reaction is each one of them is different. And, and, and that's really cool. But what happens, what we're trying to do, and you'll see this more as I go through, is collect the information so that the person that says, I'm thinking of a school, but I'm not really sure what to do, how to do, where to do, has a resource to go to and say, here's a bunch of examples, here's a bunch of ideas, here's a bunch of templates, use them, don't use them, but, but things that, when you want to start a school and somebody gives you a blank pad of paper and says, okay, write it down, start a school. You know, it's a little hard. You guys have all done it. 18 of you have done it. But, you know, how do we get more to do it? Sorry to give a speech while you were waiting no, at the mic. Thank you. For, because you, you already mentioned some issues that I wanted to. One thing that I forgot to mention is that uh, we organized the third edition this year of the Argentina School of Internet Governance, inspired by the regional model, and which is very similar, but the, the program is of three days, full days, not translation because it's intended for Argentinians, and we have also experts from the region. And the idea of the fellowship is to bring students from the provinces. Argentina is a quite large country. Many of the things happen in capital city in Buenos Aires, so the idea is to bring students from the interior of Argentina. But this year we had spontaneous fellows that uh, came from Peru, Venezuela, and Mexico. And that was, they requested that and we thought that it was okay. So it was the three times organized in uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Argentina. Our idea is to rotate in the country to go to universities, as, as the colleague previously mentioned, hope in between cities. We hope that we can do that next year. But for the moment, it, it has been easier for us to organize because I live there in Buenos Aires, and that's much easier. That's and, a nice city. I know. And, and we had, a, they were very, very well attended, 250. The, the, the room was absolutely crowded, and we were very happy with that. Thank you. Thank you. So you've brought us now to 19 schools. There's still only three pins there. Um, so anyhow, that's the first part of the website. And, and so please encourage you. You know, we don't ask for a lot of information, sort of the, the name. You know, is there a website? Where do we put the pin? I don't know. Do we require anything more than that? I mean, we give you the option to add more info, but, but, but that's one thing. OK. Another page we've got. So that is um, the, the fellows. What we've tried to do, and this one, these are just examples because we really haven't gotten it filled in yet. But we offer a chance for people that have attended the schools that want to speak about their experiences, that want to put their face before the world of saying, hey, you're looking for somebody that does IG stuff? I went to this school. Come talk to me. It's basically, you know, an opportunity to do that. So 
and, and there's basically a form in there. You can go, you can register yourself. You could say, I went to such and such a school. I think you could say more about the school. It was good, it wasn't. Well, hopefully you don't say it wasn't, but it was good and this is why, et cetera. But basically a place to start, again, sharing information, sharing the, the potential for people to contact you if somebody in your country or elsewhere wants a specialist in what you are being a specialist in. And then there's faculties. Uh, basically for anyone that has been on a faculty of one of these schools that wants to list themselves, that wants to talk about it. So for example, if a school, even if it is well staffed locally, needs someone that does the economics of whatever, or needs someone that'll talk about you know, particular technologies and doesn't have someone, knows how to reach out, either to bring them in, to get them to teach something remotely, to, to give them advice on, hey, you're into economic aspects of internet governance. We need a teacher on it. Do you know anybody local? You know, in your contacts, from your other conversations, do you know someone in my area that knows that? And, and, and these are all faculty members. Faculty members are always happy to talk about other possible faculty members. So basically asking those of you that have taught in these schools to sort of add yourself there as part of the resources that we have for people to share. As I said, going back to one of our main purposes other than defining a language that we can talk in, in terms of vocabulary, that we can basically have similar meanings on. And yes, it's still restricted to English, but at some time we may move behind that. And the problems that we would help solve on that one is how many of these terms are easily translated into your language? And do people know what those terms are? So I would love to see this taxonomy at some point spread to being multilingual. At this point, I started writing it, and the only one I could really write competently in was English, to the degree that it is even competent. But um, so basically, you know, that's another project we can think about. It's not on the list at the moment, but it's a possible project. OK, anything else? We need to, oh, yes. There's the uh, curricula. I'm not sure what's in there. I should know. It's blank. That's why I don't know what's in there. Um, it's a place that uh, basically had hoped that if people have defined curricula and they're publishable, they're not things they're keeping secret, but they've got this is the curriculum of school X, this is the curriculum of school Y in, in 2018, that they could be published there as, as examples. You know, is it your schedule, how it works? I mean, because when you're defining a school for the first time, you, you haven't even thought about things like two classes, then a break, what kind of activities, do we do stuff at night, where does dinner fall, where does lunch fall, et cetera, even those things. And, and the curricula that these schools put out that I've seen, but I don't have permission yet to publish any of them, you know, go quite a distance to, giving you a template that you could say, oh, okay, it's two courses, then a break, then two classes, then a break, or it's afternoons of, of core curricula and mornings of, of specialist, or et cetera. There are many different models, again, when you look at curriculum. So one of the things we're hoping to collect there, so if you've got a curriculum that you're willing to contribute to a list here, and then we'll figure out how to organize them. Please let Rainer know, and, and, and we'll add them to the list. Next thing we've got, we've got a wiki, and uh, basically some of the schools that have contacted and started giving information, we list with data foundation. We will then put pointers. If you give us a URL of where to go for more information on your school, we'll list that. Um, you know, there's there's school there, for example, there's there's the European school. That's one we had a lot of information on, so it was easy to fill in. Um, you know, and and equally a, a form for any of you to fill in as much of it as you can or as much of it as you want. We may ask questions that you go, that's nonsense. I don't I don't know the answer, I don't want to give the answer, you know, et cetera. 
don't, <laughs> it's really up to you all when you're filling in the form what information. If you found that we've left a criteria off, a line of information that should be there, that hasn't been there, please tell us. It's This is a, a, a growing project and we're not at all uh, defensive about what we've put there and what we haven't. Let's go on. What else is there to look at? Any school that wishes to share the material is welcome to contribute. To do so, please request an account and share your plans with the wiki maintainer via <laughs> and then the email. So basically, you know, really it's, it's Rainer's willing to work with you all to put your information in there the way you want. And, and an example we have, and, and this is, uh, I'm not gonna go into it, but the North American School, and in, please come to the microphone if you've got, or yes, yeah, somebody can bring you a microphone. The North American School on Internet Governance, which had a, a couple brief introductions, has basically graciously donated all of their information, a very rich section of the wiki covering things like their operation manual, their plan, their, their recruitment. I mean, basically spent a bit of time working with Rainer, giving the information, figuring out how to, how to organize it. Happy to do that with any of the other schools that want to add their stuff that way, please. Um, yes, that's actually my question. I'm Henriette Esterheisen from the African School. I mean, we've been going since 2013, so we now in our, what, eighth year? And um, all that material is on our website. Isn't it possible to just link, or is it not? I mean, do you want to repackage the material, or can we actually just have links to our uh, material? Either way. I, you know, basically, there's there's the there's the ease of doing a link, um, but links and then especially links to links to links sometimes get lost. Sometimes, if there's a set of core information, not everything you've got, but some core information that you think is particularly valuable that can be stored in in this one, giving a back. It really is up to what you want to do. Certainly as a first step, a link is good. As later steps, if you know, then, then storing the material there can be good too, but really what works for you. Okay, and then just one more while I have the mic. Can we change taxonomy to glossary? Because when I actually look at it, it seems to me more of a glossary. That, or was the, because the, maybe we that's can. A that's question. why I put a definition of taxonomy down at the bottom. But we can change it to anything. No, it just. But is the intention with the with that to have a classification, or is it to have explanation of concepts? And it's terms? kind of both, and maybe what we're what we need to do is separate them out at some point. But at this time, it is a classification, but it is also a glossary, but a glossary is sort of a simple thing. So yeah, I mean, we can change it, we can divide it over time if we decide that this, but basically what it was was, here was the blank pieces of paper, let's start collecting the information, give it a name, Gustavo and others have, have contributed a lot to it, but we've already reorganized it several times across the year and will not, get into long arguments about what color we're going to paint the, par the bike shed. Uh, you know, uh, basically, we can build another bike shed and we can paint the many colors we want. Uh, don't really want to worry about the names. Okay. Um, every yes. uh, remote uh, participation uh, question or suggestion from Glenn around video testimonials for the schools that have been organized. So his proposal is to consider having some testimonials. And uh, from the contribution, I can see it's got a lot to do with supporting those who want to actually start up um, a school, because he also proposes to have a how-to manual. And I think we had a slight conversation around it on would it be a new section, or would we actually add it to the wiki? So I think it's something to just uh, think about. Yeah, my, my, my first answer is way cool. It would be good to have that. And definitely I could see adding it to the wiki and maybe doing more. The wiki is a resource. I don't know if you wanted to comment. 
I think in the first place uh, it should be added to the wiki because the wiki should be open to everyone who want to do the stuff themselves. Uh, it's not uh, meant to be me uh, editing the wiki, but uh, I give on request certainly the access to this uh, and you can uh, publish your content yourself. And, and one of the things I was thinking about in, in relation to the question you asked, Henriette, when you're saying, should we put stuff in the wiki or should we use our own, is sometimes having stuff in another you know, location is, is, is a useful thing, especially if there's bandwidth problems, et cetera. It's easier to just store it somewhere. So whatever we can do to help with it. OK. Um, so that was the website. There's lots there. There's a wiki. It, it's expandable. You can have your own section of the wiki to do with as, as you think is necessary, obviously under the, the care and supervision of, of, of the, the, the wiki maintainer. Uh, can I go to now on the taxonomy or glossary or the taxonomy and glossary? Uh, one of the reasons I called it a taxonomy, to be honest, is because when we wrote the charter, we said we would work on that first. So obviously, the thing we worked on first was a taxonomy. Um, can we go to the, um, just want to show the, the, the table of contents. I'm not going to go through. Oh, yeah, no, stop there on the taxonomy. So anyhow, I did put in a definition of taxonomy because I myself was feeling a little insecure about what we meant, it is the practice and science of classifications of things and concepts, including the principles that underlie such classification. So indeed, as Anne but part of what we had to do is define the terms while we were in the process of classifying. So anyhow, the topics that are in here, this is um, the other thing you'll notice at the bottom of each page, the bottom of each page, there's a there's a Google Drive um, URL. The document is open for suggested changes and comments by anyone that has the URL. What we have is we have what was called a monthly meeting that happened six times over the course of the year because it would get canceled for one reason or another. It took three months to set up the first one, et cetera. But basically, the notion was of a monthly meeting where one thing we would do is go through all the changes that people had suggested in the document, discuss them, and then either accept them or, 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 or what have, or continue to discuss them, um, including changes that I was putting in. Basically, though I'm the only one at the moment that is listed as an editor, uh, actually Sandra might be, you might be, but, but basically, um, I make all of my contributions in, success, in suggest mode only. The only stuff I do as an editor is basically, OK, go through and correct typos, perhaps, and accept other people's stuff once it's been discussed in a meeting. So basically, we have a month where people can add content. You know, you, you added quite a bit of content. We basically add content either as comments or as suggested new text. Then we have the meeting. Please come to the mic if, if you want to. As I say, it's, it's, a, it's a virtual round table, but, but you got to find your own mic. Yeah. Cool. Hi, I'm Ellen Strickland from Internet New Zealand. Um, we have looked for the last few years at um, setting up uh, Oceania School of Internet Governance with Australia, New Zealand, and the Pacific Islands. And um, wanted to first of all say thank you to the group and the work that you're doing, because it's really valuable to us. I also just wondered if there was a way to indicate, um, and I know there were a few that are like works in project, in progress or projects, so that people who might be thinking of similar, you know, yeah. projects in the region yeah. can contact each other. So, because I wouldn't want to list us as a school, because we're yeah, just but thinking right. about it, but whether that's something that we could do. Is that yeah. something we can do? Everything we can, uh, we get input in, we can put up at the wiki, for example. So happy to do so. Might pick, you know, might just pick a different color pointer and, 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 and a flag in the entry that says in planning, under design, coming in 2021, you know, any of those things. So, yeah, it's a great idea. Thanks. Okay, so that's what's happening on the taxonomy. So, just to look at the topics at the moment. So, you could see that it is sort of a cross between a definition. So, we've, we talk about you know, various curricula issues, and that's the biggest section of the document. Then we 
talk a little bit about focus of schools. One of the things that I noticed as we were talking, some of the schools are focused on the general notion. Some are focused on preparing people for the IGF in their country. Some are focused on preparing staffers for government, et cetera. Some may be focused on, on programs to help somebody you know, fulfill a requirement of a degree. So basically trying to collect the different kinds of focus. If your focus isn't listed in the document yet, please add it. Funding models. We don't have that much yet, but there's a couple different funding models that, that people have. And, and I know that you know there may be a certain amount of confidentiality in how you fund, but to the extent that you can explain your model to someone else who's sitting somewhere and saying, I've got a great idea for a school, but I don't know how to fund it. I don't know where to find the funding. They can find a clue. And, and, and that's really the point of, of, of this. There's lengths of programs. We, we've seen you know, that there's anything from the half day to, to a week to, to perhaps longer if it's a school-oriented program to a semester or a term or I know semester's vacation in some places and it's school in other places, but you know, to a term, et cetera. So how, you know, just, just looking at that kind of thing. In other words, basically what we're trying to do here is show that there isn't any one model, but if you look at a particular model and you've got particular goals, is what you're thinking of more appropriate to a three-day model? Or is it more appropriate to a one-day model, et cetera? And so hopefully this can end up useful in that respect. Metrics and reporting, you know? A lot of the schools, probably most of them that get funding from someone, have to report, have to measure, have to do something. So what are the ways? Please. Yes, we have a training center for young IT uh, graduates, professionalism training program. So I'd be very interested to use some of the curriculum. I have two questions. One is uh, if the curriculum, I think the page is at the moment empty, but I'm sure a lot of the schools who are here have a lot of materials. I think it would be very cool if that would be open source and available to anyone who would use it, if there's no property rights problems there. And another question is, if, if I look at the list, I sort of miss data protection slash privacy policy as a subject, and or is that part of one of the uh, chapters there? Right, I because think I, we had I it. I think that's a huge one. Right, we, we have it in a couple of places, but, but certainly. Uh, and as I said, anything that's missing once you've read it and you see that it's missing, or you may find what you're looking for listed under a different heading and you may say this should be moved. It really is a document that is being written by the people contributing and uh, yeah, and please. So again, my name is Gustavo and responding to that comment, um, a, a situation that we faced through the year was that, well, we had a core team of volunteers who were trying to offer their, their knowledge, their specialties. And that's why the taxonomy is at the 0 0.7 stage. And we really want that kind of help in trying to really fill out all the subjects. It, it really is still a work in progress. Thank you. Yeah, you'll notice my answer. Almost any time somebody tells me something is missing is, the document is open for you to add it. Um, now, I, I, you know, have gotten over the years a little bit of support. So sometimes somebody says something is missing, but I can't. Then we'll put it in as a heading, and at some point I'll, I'll go through and, and I'll add it to the best of my ability. There are some things I can add because I know some stuff. There's some stuff that. I can put a stub in that says, this section would talk about X, and that's as far as my knowledge goes. So, so really, you know, but really my answer to anything that is missing is please add it. It's, it's, it's a group work. Okay, so just in terms of we got there, we got 25 minutes left, so and I wanna leave some time for the last thing. So, you know, talking about partnership, different schools have different partner models. Can they put something? Um, residential status, noticed in, in one case, people are in a hotel that is being paid for. In another place, people are living in a converted uh, monastery. 
In another place, they're coming from their homes because it's a local thing. So that, that whole notion of what are the different models? Again, so that nobody presupposes there's only one way to do something. This document and this project is definitely all about there being a multiplicity of ways of getting this kinds of school built. Requirements for acceptance into program, everything from anybody can come. I've seen, you know, we get this many applications, we'll take them, to there are so many applications and we give them all support that we give them a little test first so that we come, we, we, we come down from 5,000 applications to, to 600, you know. And, and, and so really there's, there's different models there. On, on ways of, of figuring it out in terms of, you know, how you decide who you're going to accept and how many you're going to accept. Types of session, numbers of students per class, you know, everything from little things to big things. How does it work? What does it mean? Why is a big class okay for some things but not for others, et cetera? So, as I say, we're at point seven. I'd really like to get to point, I mean, to one oh by next year's meeting. So we got a whole, whole whole bunch of time, but I'd really get, and even if it means dividing it into two documents, happy to do it. Let's, let's, let's look at what's necessary. Okay, any more questions or comments? So basically, that's what we did this year. Please come to the mic. Um, that's what we did this year. We had six meetings. We tried to have monthly meetings. We'll get a six or seven in the year. <laughs> By the way, I was checking the document, the, the Google Doc, and I noticed that there are people in there, and that's great. And I, I just like to remind you that if you have suggestions for topics which we should include to the taxonomy, you can go right there right now, and this can become part of our discussion. Yep. And if you're not secure about writing something in the line of text because you're insecure, add a comment. You, it, you, really, it's up to you. because and. We're going to go through it, and I'm, I'm, nothing's going to get judged. It's basically all going to be discussed at our next meeting, anything that anybody adds, and we'll decide, do we keep it, do we change it, do we move it? Please. Hi, Adam Peak, I can. Two things, one on the taxonomy and attributes, or whatever you want to call them. Um, it would be helpful, I think, for particularly some of the supporters and people who get involved in various ways around the world to have some notion of which schools have which attributes. Um, so if there was a listing, if your school has the attributes from those taxonomies, then tell us what they are because they may, well, it would be helpful to take a look at it. It's a nice summary. The other thing just mentioned is people coming to schools. How do you um, assess students and applications? Um, that's one part of it. The other is pre preparing the students, and one of the things we have and offer is the I Can Learn courses, which people are very welcome to do. If you come and talk to I Can about that, then you can probably set it up so that you'll know which of your students or prospective students have actually taken those courses, because they can be monitored if you wish to do that. So you could make it a pre prerequisite, a requirement, and if someone doesn't do it, then you may wish to reconsider, say, a funding or something like that, so that people have a, a base level of uh, knowledge and, and understanding. I know the Internet Society also has various online courses and others, but those would be available. Two, two responses to you. One is, yeah, we had thought about once we have a stable set of classifications and such, of adding those to some of the school listings, to some of the faculty listings, and some of the fellows. So I think that that is an intention, but we really need to know what those are first before we start doing it and, and, and tagging things. And in terms of the stuff on I Can Learn, please add it. Add it where? To add it wiki. where? To, 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 I add it to the wiki, add it to the document, talk to Rainer, find you a place. You want an ICANN page for the wiki to add all your cool stuff, add it. If it's something that you want to then mention within the document that sort of says, hey, when you're picking students and when you're preparing students, what you just said, what you just said could all be doc also added to the various documents, so please add it. And if you don't know where to add it, just tack it somewhere and we'll move it to where it belongs. Please. Um, uh, there's oh, a please. response um, on the um, 
participation online, which is a response to Adam's suggestion um, on uh, sponsorship and sharing operations. And the comment is that it has validity, but there's doubt that people would actually want to provide all their all the information on their workings for fear of losing their sponsorship. And then the second one is a question for you, Avery, on uh, the curated notes that are put on the taxonomy to say um, there's fear that some of the comments will be ignored, so you need to provide access to the curated notes. Um, and also, I'm not sure what they mean. So the notes that are added to um, the taxonomy, because you mentioned that um, people, you are the only one who has editing rights. So how can people comment? But and everybody's got everybody's got the ability to add anything they want. I'm the only one that at the moment, and I'm willing at some point when we find someone else that wants to take responsibility as an editor, you know, I, I have no problem with it. But everything is, is there, I mean, and because it's a drive document, they can add any comment they can want, they want, they can add any text they want. Um, basically, it's, it, 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 I don't, if, if you know working in a Google Drive in suggest mode, Anybody can add anything, and it becomes part of the history of the document, and nothing is ever lost. Nothing. Even if I delete something, it's still there in a previous version. So really, I'm not, and, unless there's a problem that I don't understand, which someone will have to explain better to me, nothing should be getting lost. And in terms of the accepting or non-accepting, as I said, I do that based upon the discussions that we have at the monthly meetings. And as I don't make any decisions on my own, I sort of follow that we have a monthly meeting, we do a walkthrough of all the changes. Do we accept it? Do we not accept it? And even if we don't accept it, it's still there in the history. OK, sorry. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Muriel again from Benin. Um, I was late, so I want to ask if um, at the end we can have the different links or URL uh, for the website, the wiki, and all the documents to, to take note and right. do some add and comments. Okay, we don't have to wait for the end. The name of the, it's all at, actually, you read it out because I will get it wrong. I school.net. Right. So I G S C H O O L dot net. So That's a it. fairly simple one to to do. It's kind of a cool name, I think. Um, Henriette again from Afristic. I have to go, so I just wanted to um, to say Please. that one of the things we do in the African school is evaluation, and we take evaluation very seriously. So that's, we can share our methodology, and I, I think it would be good to also have a, a space for that. But aside from doing an annual evaluation, which is, a, which is an anonymous uh, evaluation that participants complete, very detailed, and it gives very detailed feedback to the faculty as well, sometimes negative feedback or critical feedback as well. But that's a good practice. But aside from that, we um, started doing longitudinal um, research on the impact of AFRI-SIG. And we did a tracer study um, for the first um, look at the first four years of AFRI-SIG, and we'll now do one looking at the first eight years. And that has been enormously valuable, um, because that looks at how having been at AFRI-SIG has impacted on people's personal and professional lives over the longer term, um, um, has it in, you know, how is the network and how has the alumni network um, helped people um, become leaders in internet governance, actually? And again, it's a very simple methodology. Um, we work with an external independent consultant to make sure that the, there's legitimacy for this work. Um, but our methodologies are open source, so we would be we'll, we haven't put them there yet. It's just a reminder, but um, just to to add that. And then I think just the the, the final thing is, um, it would be also useful to see which ones which schools have active supported alumni networks, and which don't. Because one of our goals in Africa, second, we have a little bit of that without a lot of resources, but we do have an alumni network. 
And we have found that incredibly powerful. There's some here in the room because people actually connect with one another and self-organize meetings and sessions. And many of the alumni have started schools. And so by being part of the alumni network, they support one another as well. And I think that's also then, of course, important to get that alumni network involved in in, in this process. Can and I like that, that in, maybe you can bring up that interface again, that idea of where you have alumni share information about themselves, because I think that's a really important and nice aspect of the DC's work. Okay, thank you. And in fact, I just wanted to mention, we're now in the third section of this agenda, which is possible plans for the coming year, possible things we should do. We've got 13, 14 minutes left. There are many of you online. I'm going to shut up, but don't speak too long. Okay, thank you very much. Our experience in Nigeria... Remember to give your name. Okay, my name is Mary Uduma, for the records. Our experience in Nigeria and West Africa is that when we open the, 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 the registration, we have as many as 700 applications, right? And uh, we are, we are, we are, we are uh, faced with the challenge of how to prune them, where to prune them, and those that will do the evaluation for us. And it is, is such a, a, a big task that at the end of the day, we may have only 30 people at, uh, for the school because of uh, limited resources. So um, um, I don't know whether we, we can suggest here, probably we break down, instead of having it once a, 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 a year, Probably we do quarter so that others. Uh, what we did was to say, okay, um, we can continue on on, uh, on online webinars on it, so that uh, those that were not able to come physically because we don't have all the resources to attend to them, then they could join the uh, webinar. And we are also asking that uh, members of the DC, when we call on you to help us do the webinar, that we'll, we'll share that. Thank you, Mary. Okay, please. Again, Gustavo Mane. And about the how it works, the editing process, I just like to, to share a little bit about my experience. I joined the DC last year, I started contributing. In over a, an year of production, six meetings, never did a single comment that I made get deleted without justification, no. Everything was discussed in the meeting, everything was put on the table, there was a lot of very productive commenting and discussion. So um, if it concerns you, if you're concerned about how the process is, I can tell you it is very effective, it is very friendly, and I think it was just great. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Hello, Andrea from ICANN. I wanted just to flag a, a couple of um, elements of the school that will be happening in roughly two weeks, on the 9th to the 13th in uh, Bucharest. And that's part of the CD initiative, so the Southeastern European uh, IGF. Um, and also comes from an experience that we did last year we, before the Barcelona meeting in, um, in, uh, in Spain. In both cases, the school paired up with a university, with a local university. And there is a local institution that um, basically, in order to have the school there, uh, required to have an evaluation form at the end of the week. And um, that was very helpful to the, in the first edition. But something that we learned, and I think will be interesting to share, is that since the university is there, they require you to have um, basically an academic committee to look into the program. And that allows you to provide credits to the students. In Europe, there is a system is called ECTS, European Credit Transfer System, where no matter where you are um, residing, if you can run, you go to a course, you can transfer those credits towards your diploma in another country. And um, that we found out was extremely attractive to those that are actually in school, graduate or postgraduate program, because they would invest. Uh, in, this, in both cases, the school are one week long. Um, in order to get credit, you have to have a number of hours, um, an academic committee that looks through the program, and a test at the end. So for those that want to get the credit, 
they will do the test at the end, and then they can take the credit towards their diploma. If you're not interested, if you're already working, that's something that you can discount. But that we saw in the application really attracted uh, a lot of um, graduate uh, students that they wanted to do the school, they were interested, and they have a, and another incentive beyond, well, the topics that they must be interested. So that's something that will be, I want just to share. Thank you. No, thank you, and, and getting some of that information collected in, in our group, if you, if you can help, I mean, in the, in the documents, w would be good. One of the things that I do plan to do after this, hopefully we do really have a good transcript, is to get as much of this stuff, you know, into uh, our next year's type of work plan. So thank you very much. Please. Oh, I don't know, something happened here. Okay, uh, I wanted to follow up on what Henriette said. She left, but uh, spontaneously since 2015, it started with one of the fellows. They started with a WhatsApp group, and we realized it was very powerful among them. So every year now, once we select the fellows, we organize a super group of Telegram. So they are connected like one month or perhaps one month and a half before they get to know each other. Of course, they can have their own groups uh, and they can participate or not. It's not mandatory, but they remain open after and we feed content after the schools and they remain open for years and they get connected and it's very powerful among them. So they, they get value from the group. They share experiences, job opportunities. They go together to meetings. So that's a, an idea that we can share with others and, and also share the experience. No, thanks. In fact, yeah, one of the things I've noticed from various schools is also they look to the number of their fellows that have all of a sudden gotten roles in various institutions, companies, processes, and such, and, and that becomes significant. I like the idea of actually getting them into a group before that. I've seen a, a couple schools have groups that start after, but the idea of starting one beforehand is really quite good. So anyhow, I thank you uh, for so many of the ideas, and, and I'm not necessarily going to rattle them all off at the moment, because my memory's not that quick, but, but certainly there are a lot of good suggestions there. I'm definitely going to go through the transcript once we can get a hold of it, or the recording if there isn't a transcript, but I think they do transcripts. Um, and basically get all of these collected and you know find out now this is not all work that, that that I'll be able to do over the course of the year I'll certainly do some of it I'll certainly track it I'll certainly coordinate it but gonna need all of you that had these wonderful ideas or perhaps students and fellows that you've worked with that could translate your ideas I know many of you are probably as busy or busier than I am. And so your ability to actually do all of the ideas you got. But many of you, what, we had 18 schools, 19 schools? You all have fellows. And, and if you can get your fellows to sort of help with some of this, that's good. Because one of the things I want people to be sure of is you don't have to get it right when you put it in the document. You know, it, there, there's, there shouldn't be any fear. You can put it in under your name. You can put it in under Orange Koala. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's Google Drive. It, it's open to anybody with the URL. So if you want to put it un, ascribed under your name, that's fine. If you want to put suggestions in, but, you know, you're not sure and you're not sure you spell it right, you're not sure you got the grammar right, you're not sure your idea makes sense, you're afraid that Purple Mango, you know, does just fine. I mean, I love the characters that we've got in Google Drive that have contributed to the document. You know, some of them I know as people, I've gotten to know. Some of them are logged in Google Drive participants, but some of them are just people that heard about the document, that sat in on one of the meetings, that had something to say, they put it in there, and then they left it to our meeting. So, I don't have that much more to say. We've got five minutes or less left. I've got an any other business. Does anybody have any other business? I see nobody at the line. Do you have any other business? 
You're one of our most prolific contributors, so I'm hardly surprised. Um, I think I can really stress that we need perspectives. So we need technical people. We need a lot of perspectives to really make this curriculum shine as it well should. And again, you guys can just put your comments. If you're afraid, do it anonymously, it's fine. And we would come to the meetings. They are very productive. They are quick. And just let's work on this together. Any language? You have an, a remote comment, please. Yes, Avery, I have a comment for a remote participation. Glenn McKnight wrote, we do create notes of each day at NSIG, and it has been adopted by NSIG as well, which summarizes the session and links to the shared video and pictures. We also do a tweet storm to encourage social media sharing. Social media sharing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, now Glenn's whole... Uh, Glenn, Satish, um, you know, others, uh, whole program there with that daily note of, of, of sessions, you know, is, is really quite good, quite a lot of work on, on the people that do it. You know, other schools, for example, I think it's the African school, has every morning an open session for people to come with the questions that are pending from the day before. You know, I'm sure each, so I want to collect all those things. I want to get all those wonderful ideas and practices that people have collected so that other people can pick and choose among them and, and use the ones that make sense to them. Last call for any other business? Yes, Mary. Um, Mary, microphone, yep. Hello, hello. This one is working. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just asked for a contribution in other languages because in my community, um, like she would uh, do it in, in French. Okay, yeah. It'd be great to have things in other languages. I will need excessive amounts of help from people that are specialists in those languages. I've got English, I got a bit of Italian and a bit of Hebrew, but not any of these other useful languages. So, you know, if you want stuff in other languages, you're gonna have to take responsibility and, and, and guide it because I can't. I'm happy to help in any way I can. You know, set up documents, track things, coordinate, you know, et cetera, but I can read French, I can understand a little Spanish, but you know, that's about it. So anyhow, if nobody's got anything else, I thank you, as I said, igschools.net. It's easy and as much information as we can collect there, that's how much information will be available to you all. Thank you all for the contributions you made in this meeting and uh, our first, our next meeting will probably not be in December. It'll probably be sometime in January. And uh, we try to be global. There's not that many times of the day that work, you know, so there'll be two, three times to choose from. We pretty much picked one last time that we just kept to it, but pick a day. So anyhow, I'll do that. Hopefully you're all on the list. If you're not on the list, there's information on igschools.net to get yourself registered. Thank you.